Hey, what's going on everybody? You know who it is. Um, I want to elaborate a little bit on the entity shit I was talking about yesterday. The thought forms and the psychic medium part I was talking about. So, first of all, anybody who's a psychic medium out there who might be listening to my stuff, maybe you think you're psychic medium. I'm not dissing you. I'm not saying um, what you're doing is fake. Uh, and the opposite is true. I'm not saying what you're doing is fake. I'm just saying my experience. And when I talk to these things, and what I've been told by these things is that they're created from us. These thought forms, these entities, our dead mother, our dead fathers, our dead fucking whatever that's hanging around us are part of our mind that we created. They're in another realm, but they can tell us stuff. You can't see your breath, but you breathe it in. Just like you can't know where those thoughts are coming from, but it's the thought form beside you where it's, where it's coming from. You can create that thought form. So, I... I spiritual community um i used to do these little i used I, I used to watch things that were like you know going in a meditative state going in a trance like state you know, and you see this angel or you see this light being beside you giving you a hug giving you energy you know this light being is now your your guardian to get, you know sometimes it's getting in touch with your um your uh guardian angels and shit like that right but what are these people having you do if and this is a big if okay because i don't know and it's not just a general statement depending on the person some of these meditations can work and do work um the nature of guardian angels i don't know well, i'm not going to say they're real or not real i like to think something like that is possible but i'm not going to go as far and say it is because i don't think i'm big into the thought forms because they work creating a thought form an entity a servitor it's a lot of work but you get good return on the work if you were to think of it as an investment, I'm telling you right now, that's a good investment. When you invest your time into creating a servitor that will bring you financial freedom or bring you um, followers, whatever the case is, whatever you want that for. You, know, you can make a protection one. You're not really going to be able to see the results of that one. They'll just know you're safe and nothing bad will happen to you. You know, your fucking house won't get hit by a hurricane or whatever, you know. And it doesn't mean disaster still won't happen in your town. But your house won't be affected when the disaster hits. And the ultimate way to know that this works is to have complete faith in the fact that it will work. So what I was trying to get at wasn't that psychic mediums are fake. That they're not real. They're bullshit people. They are real. They are really seeing something there and talking to it and communicating with it. But it's more, if anything, what I'm saying is I'm trying to, I'm proving that psychic mediumship is a real thing I'm um, saying that they deserve the money you're paying them because they are getting rid of an entity that's beside you that you're holding on to when you get rid of that entity that's beside you it's going to feel great also inside you as above so below as within so without or as without whatever however you state that state <laughs> that fucking maxim but point is holy fuck Anyways, whole um, point is, they are doing something, and they're doing something good. They're doing something to help people. Um, now, they might not even know what those things, natural things are. Like. Think about it. If you're born with the ability to see these things, um, people's thought forms. And as a kid, you're hanging out with other kids. And let's say these other kids are, um, they saw a scary movie with their parents or with their cousins. And they're tormented by a fucking clown. They have this crazy little clown fucking thing that scares them. That's always around them when they're in a scary mood. Because when people change their mood, whether they're in a happy or a sad mood, their thought forms around them, they're, they're, those are going to change. The ones that they're in tune with are going to come around. It's like the way to, when I was doing all the COVID-19 stuff, I said I was going to have a great episode on the Spreaker. I was going to prove everything is fake and that you can't get hurt. And I never released it. Because I ultimately realized that I was giving too much attention to COVID. I was constantly talking about COVID. And the worst thing you can do is give attention to COVID. So I stopped. But some of the information I did give was that we all have uh, our magnetic field around us. Some people call it the aura. Doesn't matter what you call it. You have a magnetic field around you. Your brain makes a small magnetic field itself. Your heart makes a huge one. Um, the brain's telling the heart what to do. The heart tells the brain what to do. Who knows? Um, 
fuck I was watching the kids TV show and it was it was fucking funny here. I think it's digging shark. They're not even talking the show, but my fucking three year old loves it. It's a shark and this other fucking it's almost like the Roadrunner and a coyote. Um your roadrunner or the coyote is always trying to get the roadrunner but it always fails. Well in this case this little, little dog looking fucking thing is always trying to get a mermaid that the shark likes, loves. And so he's always having to save the shark's always saving the mermaid from the coyote or the mermaid's friends or whatever. But anyways, the one time, the one episode, uh, you see inside the shark, and it's his brain, it's their heart, and they're at this, like, command station, and the heart is at the, the steering wheel, and the brain's sitting back fucking reading a book, you know, smart, and the, the heart's getting all fucking wound up because he's pissed off, like, we gotta go fuck that guy up, he's fucking taking our mermaid, and the brain slaps him in the face, like, points at his fucking brain, like, think about it for a second, does something super calm and relaxed, gets the girl back, and he goes back and sits down. And I see that's how it's done. But at the end of the episode, they actually started fighting because even though the brain was very depolarized and was able to do, use his head to get out of that mess, there is something that can still affect the brain. Meaning there's some area where that brain is polarized. And if someone can find out, you can be the most depolarized person in the world, but if someone finds where your weakness is, where you are depolarized, and they and they, they use that, they perverted against you they they manipulate you using whatever that is you know me would probably be my family my kids i'm sure i have more than that, that i don't know about but you know that would fuck me over but anyway so they, they did something there it was the little the little fucking i don't know why i'm talking about this but the little dog guy has his little sidekick who makes up all the plans so that guy came up with a plan that would both take care of his heart and his brain so then it was a battle and that's how he got her but then you know they both worked together in the end and got the mermaid back which is pretty cool and you know my daughter's just like eating it all up i gotta monitor her time on there because she literally would be in a trance like state all fucking day long with zig and Sharko on on youtube if i let her in fuck that not gonna let her as much as that fucking episode was helpful to teach me something and i'm glad i saw it it's still not good to watch tv like that all that much but at least a cartoon is showing her cartoon characters. And it's not showing her kids being kidnapped, kids dying of cancer, kids getting abused by their parents. You know what I mean? It's not showing her negative imagery that could get stuck in her head and play out in her reality. It's a cartoon. Nonetheless, it doesn't mean circumstantially if she sees herself as one of those characters and sees me as one of those characters and I'm doing something to that character on there, quote unquote, then, you know, there's a chance it could still play out. But why am I talking about that? Okay, but anyways, back to the second medium thing. I'm not saying these things are fake. I'm saying they're more real this way than anything. We are creating these thought forms, okay? They're around us. So what I was saying about the whole guardian angel and thing, if you're ever watching something and it tells you to imagine a specific being and they put love emotion into it and that this thing loves you or whatever, you might inadvertently create a thought form. So be careful with that shit. Especially be careful with whatever that thing may or may not, what it's supposed to be doing. So this person is creating, they're getting you to create a thought form that's gonna bring you um, financial abundance, then you know, okay, cool. If you are, if he's telling you to visualize a specific, let's say archangel or specific deity, Unless deity is made to get you prosperity. Well, that might be beneficial to you. Because you might create a fucking deity that does that. Can he have that deity program to bring him the money? And take your money? Probably. It'd be fucking... Something you have to really think about. And you'd have to make the person look at a certain sigil. And then visualize the created character that you made that... Um, is connected to that sigil and in the programming in that sigil would say take this person's money and bring it to me and not let them know about it and whatever and then yes it's possible so be careful but ultimately if you're going to make a thought form and it's supposed to bring you back money and that's what they're saying that's what you hear and that's what you watch well it should be fine but I just want to put a little warning message out there two reasons that why I shouldn't be eating and fucking recording, but fucking don't hit all. Anyways, pick up where I left off. The light's gonna bug me. Yeah, the light's bugging me. Oh.
almost, almost. Not quite, not quite. And fuck it. So, what I was talking about was, um, yeah, the last um, the two things I wanted to get across was, one, I wasn't knocking psychic mediums. My Facebook says says I'm psychic. That's not accurate. I'm not psychic. I channel information, as does everybody, and I use that information to help teach. But I wasn't calling them a fake. I think they're real. The second thing was, what the fuck was the second thing? Oh, just be careful. If someone, I want people, if you don't study soft forms and you don't know, if you're in spirituality, well, you can't know what you don't know, but you're on this magical, awesome roller coaster ride and things, because there's probably things I might be doing now that I will find out later were inaccurate, wrong, or I was being deceived. Who knows? But at my current state where I am right now, there's some things I know. And now it came to me today. I remembered a few of the people that in the past were making me visualize certain beings in front of me. And nothing that that was doing was it was harmful or trying to hurt, I don't think, anyways. But uh, now I remember looking at pictures. Pictures can be sigils too. They kind of a pictogram, sigil. It could be words, it could be letters, it could be anything. So even if they show you a picture of a deity that you gotta visualize, well, that deity picture could have a hidden message in it as well. So once again, be careful. Card to get to your mind. When you study thought forms, you can't be fooled by thought forms. I know it's not that broad. It's not that blanket statement like that, but in a sense, that's how it works, right? When you know there's deception out there, well, then you find the deception and the deception can't deceive you, basically. Second oldest is having issues with taking too much of our food. You know, I'm not gonna parent that's gonna get mad if if I'm asleep and my kid want, I didn't get my kid a snack, you know, forgot why I fell asleep early. I don't want them to wake me up to ask for a snack. I wanna trust them to go grab a snack. My biggest, my oldest is bigger than me. So I know one apple or a popsicle is not gonna do it. So if he ends up taking a sandwich, it's not the end of the world. But it's when it's four sandwiches at 12 o'clock at night because they woke up hungry and on my way upstairs and they decide to take that and then plus another two popsicles or something like that. That's the issue. So if anybody thinks all he doesn't give his kids a snack, no, it's not it. It's just still, first of all, giving them a snack that later. Your child or yourself a snack right before sleep is probably one of the worst fucking things you can do. Not even just for gaining weight in your appearance, but when a kid doesn't like their appearance and they go through school thinking they're ugly, well, how do you think that affects them making friends and having boyfriends and socializing? But that's not even the worst of it. All the aspects of how your digestive system works and if you wake up and eat because you had to pee or something like that, let's say, then you're stopping the whole digestive system and it has to start all over again. It takes about four hours for it to get in that right place when you do it just sleeping and not meditation and other shit that I'm not gonna get into. But the point is it's so terrible for everybody and anybody. And I'm not judging because I still do it from time to time. When you first wake up, you don't have the faculties of reason. That's why they say not to make big choices, make big decisions when you first wake up, kind of like when you're drunk or when you're asleep or when you just lost somebody because your mind is not thinking right. I mean, are we ever? But point is, you know, worst thing you can do. So before you judge anybody who gives their kids only a small snack at night and not enough, or before you judge anybody who says no snack to their kids at night, and you give your kids a huge snack, whatever they want, a Pepsi and fucking chocolate bars, well, you're a bad parent because that's the worst thing you could fucking do. Giving into the child and letting them have their way is probably the worst thing you can do. Because how often do you get your way? How often does everything work out for you? So when that thing ha when things work out, it's a fucking blessing. But nine times out of a ten, well, probably seven, you, you know, life doesn't always isn't always great. That's why there's such a push. So there's so many people in self improvement, new age, magic shit, and conspiracy, doom and gloom stuff. Because we know the tragedy of this shit. The shit's not fun. If you give your kid everything, when they leave the nest, they're going to expect everybody to give them everything. And they're going to think everybody else is the fucking problem. You're setting them up for failure. Don't set your children up for failure. Set them up for success. Be a little hard on them. And then reward them when they do a good job. 
Don't just reward them because you think you're being a bad parent or you think you're being too hard on them. That doesn't help anything. It just makes everything worse. And then what happens when they become a teen? You know, it's cute to give a six, seven, maybe even a nine-year-old their way. Because you, know, you don't like when they're sad. But what happens when that nine-year-old is a 15-year-old and the parents have no control over that kid and they're freaking out and not eating and leaving the house because you're not getting their way anymore. And, you, and it's too late to do anything. Their mind's already been developed. They're fucking nine years old. From zero to five to seven, roughly there, zero to seven, is when they're recording everything through their subconscious mind. And then that's whenever you got to put in the good programming, the good, the decisions, the morals. I have a kid with ADHD and the whole medication bullshit thing that we're supposed to do for him was to slow down his mind so he's not so hyper and going all over the place and then put in the the right t tips and techniques and how to deal with stress without using violence because he would resort to violence. He wouldn't get his way, it would be violence. He'd hit teachers, doesn't matter, punch walls, hit his head against the wall, hit girls, didn't matter. He would do everything and anything. So the medication slows down his mind so he doesn't always go to those things so he's not a harm to him or anybody else. And then while his mind is a little bit slower, we can input the right ways, the right techniques so that the programming can take. So by the time he's above seven years old, we put implanted the programming, therefore the ADHD can be reduced. And it's a hell of a plan to reduce it. It has some sound principles it actually makes sense when you think about it i'm not saying adhd is a real thing and or is a problem i think there is something that does because I, I have a child with that i know and i i'm technically attention deficit and you know you can kind of tell the way i talk i'm all over the place i can't even go in a straight line but it's not necessarily a bad thing either and it's not necessarily the, the, i don't think pills drugs Anything, an amphetamine, you know, methamphetamines, crystal meth, speed, Ritalin, all these things are all the same thing. The Ritalin and Concerta is all the same fucking thing as speed and crystal methamphetamines. But I can't see that being a good long-term solution. It's, but it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be from zero to seven slash nine or ten for a couple extra three years. And you get that programming in that child to behave right so that whenever you take the pills away they have manners they have discipline but that's not what happens parents aren't told this so they put their kids on the fucking pills to shut them up so they can go back to sleep as they're hung over and it's terrible it's fucking terrible so it's not all all the fucking responsibility isn't all on the doctors and the pharmacies and big pharma it's not all on them it's on the lazy fucking parents who want their kids to just obey yet they didn't deserve or earn respect you need to earn respect from your children, not fucking command it without grounds. I mean, that's just stupid. Why do you think your kids are rebelling against you? Because you haven't played with them. You haven't done things. And, you know, even if you're that parent that maybe had, but you're having trouble keeping up because maybe you're up there in age and you think, well, I buy him all this stuff. He should get it. Oh, well, they don't get that. Children don't know what money is. They know what it is. It's something you need to buy stuff. Something you command your parents to give to you and they give it to you. It's something your parents say no, even though they have a ton of it. They don't understand until they start working and earning that money. They have no concept of money. So anything you buy them, it could be a $5 thing or a $1,000 thing or a $100,000 thing. It makes no fucking difference. Obviously, if it's a hundred thousand dollar thing and they love said thing like a car when they're 16, well, then yeah, you're gonna get a lot of love for a few months, maybe even for a fucking year. But then the novelty dies or romance dies, and you're back to the person they still need more money from. You know, it doesn't matter. And they'll sell that car if they're hooked on drugs and shit, and that's how much it meant. It's nothing. You don't get to take that when you go. It doesn't mean shit. They put emotional value on things. That's kind of what I was saying there. So, you know, a kid could want a five dollar thing, or a kid could want a fifty dollar thing, and they could have the same emotional value to both those things. And the fifty to the five means nothing. They need both that five dollar, let's say, headset, so they can listen to music while they're in class because everybody else is and they don't have a headset yet. And they could want that fifty dollar, fucking I don't know, whatever is fifty dollars now for fucking kids, fucking uh, Xbox money to play Xbox games. And you would say, well, how are those two things the fucking same right now? How do they want both these the same amount? It's like, well, because that's how people work. They're impulsive and they want things when they want them. So I'm gonna leave that topic alone, the kids, the parents, all that bullshit. And I'll just get back to the whole deceiving and the thought form thing I was talking about because that's what I wanna focus on. I am almost done. I won't take any more of your time than I need to, but 
fuck whenever you uh, when you're aware of the deception, then you know, like you see my little that's my little portable. Uh, oh well, let me zoom in. Shit, over here, oh. over here, beside my finger, where my smoke's pointing to. That's my little portable pillar I was talking about in front of the TV over there, and uh, this where this little keyboard is. Is going to be an altar ringing downstairs once I cleanse it. This is what I currently am using for an altar. As you can tell, it's a little messy right now because. Well, at night after I do something, after I do a ritual and before I mix a candle, before I go to bed, for either the next day or the same days, whatever ritual, I'll get into that maybe some other day. I just kind of leave things where it is next day for ritual. Because you don't want to leave your altar messy and you don't want to not cleanse your altar either because that can lead to um, problems in the mind, um, cluttered mind. You know, your house is also an extension of your mind. All this is. If you think about the subconscious as the part that creates a reality, well, then if this is creating part, of, if this is creating a reality, well, then if your house is part of what it's created and give to you, your little chunk of this big video game we all share, then if yours is messy, cluttered, unorganized, especially your altar, your altar layers where you use symbolic messages to get into your mind what you want to happen in your life, and if you are going there and leaving it a fucking mess as mine looks right now, then um, don't be surprised if it doesn't work out or if it's really unorganized and chaotic and then you know you clean it up and then boom, your shit happens. So just little things like that are good to keep in mind, but don't let them stop you from doing things or because if you stick too much to procedure and theory and saying that God name's completely correct and you know, whatever. Um, oh, I, I used an athame to, uh, to, to whatever, I was using my wand to make my circle instead of my thumb. Well, you can do that. I'm sure you can. It's, it's only if you hear that you're not supposed to, that you're gonna say, oh fuck, all those things that in the past don't count because of that. If you really believe that, then you will stop all that manifestation that might've been ready to happen. Belief is important. It's not everything. And if you believe you're not gonna jump off a cliff, if you believe that you can jump off a cliff and not die, you know, maybe like you're gonna fly or something like that. Well, yeah, that's fucked because you're going against laws of this realm. But the belief you can have that are within the laws of this realm, you can sustain. If you can believe that's eating salt, right, putting salt in water every day and drinking that water, if you believe that's gonna get rid of your cancer, you will get rid of that cancer. And if you haven't been doing that and then now you, now you have cancer, well, I would totally tell you to do that. You'll be making the pH in your body rise up. And the higher pH you have, the more electricity your cells have to fight against things, to re, re, uh, rejuvenate, to recreate, to um, regenerate more cells, right? They make more cells as they're dying, basically. When a cell starts dying, it tells two new cells to start growing. Well, some part of it does that, and they keep multiplying that way. But when you have cancer, your cells are separating from each other. Some are going off thinking they're separate from the body and they have their own consciousness yet they grow as a tumor and then they kill the host and then the whole thing dies so point is water with high ph will will help you it might not get rid of your cancer completely and it may but you add that with putting your feet on the fucking ground um maybe changing your diet you know not drinking while you eat so you don't slow down the process you start meditating you get a decent night's sleep you start moving your body slowly and surely because moving your body as an exercise there's these little battery packs is how the correspondence and the comparison and the metaphor is but there's these places in your body because your cells are all governed your cells from your feet to your head you got a fucking load a load of them more than there's people on the earth in one human body has that more cells than there is people on this earth so every section has this little battery pack area where the energy comes from and then the energy that fuels those little battery pack areas are through exercise through the water you drink through the food you eat so on and so forth now the food you eat is not as important as the water and the water you drink isn't as important as the way you breathe so if you have any kind of disease and you want to kick it first thing you do breathe through your nose only slow down get out of fight or flight get out of sympathetic and get in the parasympathetic then add high ph to your water then you do a better diet and you work on exercise all these things will fuel your body and your cells will start working the way they're supposed to work and you won't even need to use magic but you do all that and then you start manifesting you start doing your magic your ritual focusing on the part of your body that you need to heal when you're already doing all those other things then your cells can work with you because 
they have the power to do what you're asking them to do. But if your body is weak and not powerful, then how is your mind going to change what's happening down there? Subconscious control is the body. If the body is weak, how can the subconscious turn that weak body into something strong if you're not putting it in the right stuff? Anyway, so I'm supposed to be able to go for this ride and finish up my video, but I guess my wife wants to come with me, so I'm not going to be able to. But what I was saying about deception, why isn't this turning? It's going to be all fucking crooked. Anyway, so um, the deception, and when you're aware of a deception, then you're now inoculated to it and you can't be deceived by it. So... And you can say that, well, coronavirus is real. Well, yeah, it is fucking real. It absolutely is real. It's a real thing. But it doesn't have to be. I don't believe that coronavirus can affect me. And it won't affect me. If I carry that belief, those beliefs are within my realm. Um, they don't defy my realm's laws. Therefore, I can have that belief and it will work for me. Same with the belief that, you know, that the moon is something we can send something to, but it's not something any human can land on. I can hold that belief, it's within my realms, and it's fine to believe that. So, once again, within my realm, don't matter. Um, so there's many things like that. So this is where the deception thing comes in. If you have a belief, and it's opposite of deception, as long as you're not breaking the Kabbalah and the Seven Hermetic Principles, then you're fine and it'll work. What? Don't, you'll wreck the rim, man. Yeah, you'll wreck the bike's rim. We got a tube for it to fix it, so put it away, put it back in there so it doesn't get stolen. What? I know, but if she's coming with us and no one's here, put it in the garage. Austin's here, but he's not gonna come out and save it if it's getting. Just put it in the garage for now so it doesn't get stolen. Anyway, so that was the main point I was trying to get at with the whole deception thing. I'm probably just gonna cut it off here. You don't have much more to say. I'll try to make a second video if I can, but make sure whatever deceptions you're worried about whatever you know if you want to be prepared for stuff um you know you gotta figure out this stuff and i think thought forms is something worth looking into because and prana and air and breath because breath is one of the most important things we can't go without two minutes without breath most people not even one minute so that's that's the biggest deception you need to look into and then and that's connected to spirituality but, you know, all these five aspects of the pentagram is the ones you need to look into. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.